so now the first thing I'd like to do is start off by giving you a quote from, I hope you can read that, it might be a little bit hard, but this comes from your reading and I thought, you know, to uh, selectively slip in something from your reading that you've all read, of course, because everybody had these done days ago in these assignments. And this is from Ortega. So it's looking at the quote is from Ortega, and she kind of, in a way, sets up a later chapter in the book that you'll be reading in your course text. But also, in a sense, she, she creates, I think, a framework for some of the issues that I like to talk about. So she talks about power and prejudice are also unexamined factors in cognitive interactions or about the environment, the linguistic environment. More generally, and whatever language learning may come about as a result of interaction, interpersonal communication is never just about language. But it always involves interlocutors' sense of self as well as power differentials. And in here you see the, the hint of Bonnie Norton's work on language and identity. So the most important contribution and the most important limitation that we can remember as we leave this chapter when we read for tonight, um, is the realization that what matters in the linguistic environment is not simply what's out there physically or even socially surrounding language, but rather what learners make of it, how they process or not the linguistic data, and how they live and experience that environment. In chapter 10, we'll explore how social structures and individual agency also shape lived experience in a dialectic tension and in the process help explain the learning or not learning of traditional languages. So it's a nice quote to set up what I think is the major contribution of a critical applied linguistics perspective on SLA. And she, and in, in chapter 10, this is what we get to. Now, the first thing we're, we're gonna look at, so this is the bringing together of two traditions or two lines of thought, one critical and one communicative language teaching. Did anybody get a chance to look at Constant Lumi's article for today? Okay, good. So he gives a really interesting history of the origins of communicative competence. He talks about Del Himes and the corrective to Chomsky's notion of the innate mentalist notion of competence performance. He talks about Del Himes looking at communicative competence must arise within specific communities of what what can be said? What is appropriate for that specific place? So the key theorists were Del Himes. Now, the, the, as in Lung says, coming into English language teaching, and I was a student um, at OISI where Canali and Sway were professors. Uh, unfortunately, Michael Canali passed away before he got there. Canali and Swain, in a sense, constructed a definitive structure of communicative language teaching with theoretical four components. Uh, Chris Cannon was also important. David Noonan, um, I will mention a little bit later, was looking at especially the notion of task-based language teaching as an integration of communicative principles. And Noonan also looked at, new, for me, Noonan's important because it was kind of what I was trained in, this idea of a strong form of communicative language teaching, very much influenced by uh, Krashen's work and the idea of a natural acquisition, very much uh, uh, parallel to what first language acquisition would be, just making sure the exposure to the target language is adequate in the, in the development of, and the linear development of uh, morpho, morpheme and lexical and grammatical components. I was also trained in David Wilkins. Um, when I was studying my Tesla training in the 80s, we would learn about the different ways to give advice. That was a big thing. So we would see all of the different ways to give advice, to talk about time, what would be the different options and structures. And these are also important things in the early kinds of functional syllabuses. Um, the classroom environment, so we were talking about linguistic environments. A key thing in the communicative language teaching is saw itself as a movement away from grammar and translation. It looked at learning through, as we talked about, the importance of interaction the importance of negotiation and meaning. A real emphasis on using authentic texts. And when I was, when I was training this idea of what the real world texts, being able to do things in the class that match what goes on in the real world was really important. 
Um, and then there's also, we would really look at this idea of language learning strategies, looking at ways in which students can become autonomous, independent learners. Then there is an emphasis on creativity, experimentation, students' experiences, influencing the syllabus. So this is a this is a huge sea change from a lot of the earlier kinds of teaching. And then the kinds of activities we try to do, role playing, information gaps, the kinds of interaction, small group work, um, and lots of games. That was the kind of way I was trained in this notion of community of teaching. So this is one of the traditions. And now I'd like to talk about taking you towards a critical uh, tradition that I'm going to, in a sense, bring you together. So 